Uncle Remus, The Adventures of Burr Rabbit, as told by Julius Lester, illustrated by Jerry Pinky. Burr Rabbit and the Tar Baby. Early one morning, even before Sister Moon had put on her negligee, Burr Fox was up and moving around. He had a glint in his eye, so you know he was up to no good. He mixed up a big batch of tar and made it into the shape of a baby. By the time he finished, Burr's son was yawning himself awake and peeking one eye over the top side of the earth. Burr Fox took his tar baby down to the road, the very road Burr Rabbit walked along every morning. He set the tar baby in the road, put a hat on it, and then hid in a ditch. He had scarcely gotten comfortable, as comfortable as one can get in a ditch, before Burr Rabbit came strutting along like he owned the world and was collecting rent from everybody in it. Seeing the tar baby, Burr Rabbit tipped his hat. Good morning. Nice day, ain't it? Of course, any day I wake up and find I'm still alive is a nice day as far as I'm concerned. (laughs) He laughed at his joke which he thought was pretty good. Ain't too bad if I say so myself. Tar Baby don't say a word. Burr Fox stuck his head up out of the ditch, grinning. You deaf? Burr Rabbit asked the Tar Baby. If you are, I can talk louder, he yelled. How are you this morning? Nice day, ain't it? Tar Baby still don't say nothing. Burr Rabbit was getting kind of annoyed. I don't know what's wrong with this new generation. Didn't your parents teach you no manners? Tar Baby don't say nothing. Well, I reckon I'll teach you some. He hauled off and hit the Tar Baby. Blip! And his fist was stuck to the side of the Tar Baby's face. You let me go! Bird Rabbit yelled. Let me go, or I'll really pop you one. He twisted and turned, but he couldn't get loose. All right, I warned you. And he smacked Tar Baby on the side of his head. Blip! The other fist was stuck. Burr Rabbit was sure enough mad now. You turn me loose or I'll make you wish you'd never been born. Clunk! He kicked the Tar Baby and his foot was stuck. He was cussing and carrying on something terrible and kicked the Tar Baby with his other foot and clunk! That foot was caught. You let me go, or I'll butt you with my head. He butted the tar baby under the chin, and clunk! His head was stuck. Burr Fox sauntered out of the ditch, just as cool as a sweat on the side of a glass of iced tea. He looked at Burr Rabbit stuck to the tar baby and laughed until he was almost sick. <laughs> Well, I got you now, Burr Fox said when he was able to catch his breath. (laughs) You floppy-eared, pom-pom tail, good for nothing. I guess you know who's having a rabbit for dinner this night. Burr Rabbit would have turned around and looked at him if he could have unstuck his head. Didn't matter. He heard the drool in Burr Fox's voice and knew he was in a world of trouble. You ain't going to be going around through the community raising commotion anymore, Burr Rabbit. And it's your own fault, too. Didn't nobody tell you to be so friendly with the Tar Baby? You stuck yourself on that Tar Baby without so much as an invitation. There you are. And there you'll be till I get my fire started and my barbecue sauce ready. Burr Rabbit always got enough lip for anybody and everybody. He even told God once that he'd done wrong on the third day of creation. This time, though, Burr Rabbit talked mighty humble. Well, Burr Fox, no doubt about it, you got me. And no point my saying that I would improve my ways if you spared me. No point at all, Burr Fox agreed as he started gathering kindling for the fire. I 
guess I'm going to be barbecued this day, Burr Rabbit sighed. But getting barbecued is a whole lot better than getting thrown in the briar patch. He sighed again. No doubt about it. Getting barbecued is almost a blessing compared to being thrown in that briar patch on the other side of the road. If you got to go, go in barbecue sauce. That's what I always say. How much lemon juice and brown sugar you put in yours? When Burr Fox heard this, he had to do some thinking because he wanted the worst death possible for that rabbit. Now that I think's on it, it's too hot to be standing over a hot fire. I think I'll hang you. Burr Rabbit shuddered. Hanging is a terrible way to die. Just terrible. But I thank you for being so considerate. Hanging is better than being thrown in the bride patch. Burr Fox thought that over a minute. Come to think of it, I can't hang you because I didn't bring my rope. I'll drown you in the creek over yonder. Burr Rabbit sniffed like he was about to cry. No, no, Burr Fox. You know I can't stand water. But I guess drowning, awful as it is, is better than the briar patch. I got it, Burr Fox exclaimed. I don't feel like dragging you all the way down to the creek. I got my knife right here. I'm going to skin you. He pulled out his knife. Burr Rabbit's ears shivered. That's all right, Burr Fox. It'll hurt something awful. But go ahead and skin me. Scratch out my eyeballs. Tear out my ears by the roots. Cut off my legs. Do whatever you want to do with me, Burr Fox. But, but please, please. Please! Don't throw me in that briar patch! Burr Fox was convinced now that the worst thing he could do to Burr Rabbit was the very thing Burr Rabbit didn't want him to do. He snatched him off the tar baby and wound up his arm like he was trying to throw a fastball past Hank Aaron and chunked that rabbit across the road smack dab in the middle of the briar patch. Burr Fox waited. Didn't hear a thing. He waited a little longer. Still no sound. And just about the time he decided he was rid of Burr Rabbit, just about the time a big grin started to spread across his face, he heard a little giggle. <coughs> and the giggle broke into the loudest laugh you've ever heard. <coughs> Burr Fox looked up to see Burr Rabbit sitting on the top of the hill on the other side of the briar patch. Burr Rabbit waved. I was born and raised in the briar patch, Burr Fox. Born and raised in the briar patch. And he hopped on over the hill and out of sight. The end. To find Tar Baby and other Burr Rabbit tales as told by Julius Lester, visit your local library.